Okay, so we've met Big Boy a couple of times in my previous videos. Let me just climb out. This is like the incredibly awkward bit, especially with my hip. I'm not the most agile. So I thought it'd be a good idea to give you a little bit of a run through of what makes Big Boy a rally car based on the original vehicle that this thing is made from. So Bola are a company that's a division owned by Jaguar Land Rover now. And Drew, who used to run Bola, unfortunately died. And so it's now kind of after going into liquidation, being bought by Land Rover. They have provided the donor vehicle. So a Defender 90, completely normal, off the production line from Land Rover. Bola have then taken it, stripped it down, and built it into a rally car. Now there are a few key things that are worth talking about as far as what is the difference between the standard model and what it is now. So we're gonna go around the car. First of all, you can see that the bottom of the door has actually been shortened. That is because of the structural strengthening that the chassis and the whole vehicle has had to make it strong enough for the terrain that we're gonna be hitting. So you can see this big plate here, the whole underside of the car has been reinforced. It's got struts going across cross for sort of strength as well and the other advantage is if you start getting into more difficult terrain let's say sandy stuff having a shorter door is going to be easier for you getting in and out we've got much stronger rims on the vehicle I believe they're around 30% stronger than a standard defender wheel now it's not because a defender wheel on a normal Land Rover is it's weak, it's because this car is going to be hitting really rough terrain at speed. You've got a different material on the wheel arch. Now that was all through the research and the training of terrain that Bola have put these cars through. They realised in heavy mud, the lining of the wheel arch has held loads of material and it was all clagged up. So once it came into the pits, there was this huge job just trying to clean them before they could even start looking at wheels and stuff. All the learnings, big mud flaps, they're actually something that's compulsory in sort of a lot of the rally protocols and regulations. Uh, and so they're on there to, to protect and help with, I don't actually know why you need big flaps, but you need big flaps, okay? One of the reasons why it's a great program coming to Bowler as a rally car is that they know all the regulations and this thing's been built to meet those. On the rear end, there are big towing arms here. They're just constantly there. If you get into trouble, you can be recovered. This latch used to be electric. On a rally car, you need to have a manual rear, partly because of the electronic systems that has been put in this car. Once you take the airbags out, the engine won't start. Once the door isn't shut, the engine doesn't do stuff. And to be able to put it into bowler mode, which I'll mention in a moment, you need to be able to trick the system. So a manual rear has been put on. Uh, going into the back, we have a spare tire. Right now for this hill climb, we only need to have one spare tire, but it's actually a setup that can take two tires for some of the, the longer or European rallies. A jack tool, everything that you need in there. You've got all the compulsory stuff that you need, such as the board. If you break down, you want to be like, I'm okay, or SOS, come help me. Is that the right way up? Oh, that's a mind game, isn't it? Which way is the right way? What else is in here? That's probably the key parts in the back. We can see here though, that we've got a massive roll cage. Now this is a modular roll cage because the car's already built. So typically, and some cars that have a roll cage, the roll cage is made and then the car's built around it. Because this car's already made and Bola then takes it into a rally car, this is modular and it's built on the inside. Doing it sort of a welded frame is a lot more time requiring for them. And the modular also means that if part of the roll cage is damaged, you can replace sections of it, which is a, a bonus as well. You can see also inside everything's stripped out. So all of the beautiful soundproofing and material that would get dirty and soggy in a rally car is all been stripped out to the bare bones. So weight wise, this vehicle is probably roughly on par, possibly a little bit heavier than a normal Defender. Now, when you think about all of the seats, all of the stuff that's been stripped out, that's weight saving, but you've also got the fact that stuff's being put in like the roll cage, etc. Um, and the fire extinguisher system. So if we come around here, we can see a button on the side here. This links to the fire extinguisher. So there is an emergency system in there that which gives you roughly 45 seconds to get out of the car if there's an issue. It's highly unlikely to put a fire out out. It's to get the passengers out of the car safely and you can activate it from the outside. Now, windows wise, we've got some uh, plastic windows with a really sexy little hatch. 
because you need to be able to see, speak to the marshals and give them your time cards. Uh, you don't want glass, it's a safety thing. So same up here, that glass panel has been changed as well and that glass from around the drivers are gone. Coming around to the front, we've got latches on the bonnet and that's going to obviously give you extra protection to make sure this doesn't come up. We've got some variations on the front here too. So big plates, lots of protection on the underside. These vehicles are going to be going at speed through hard terrain. The tyres and the rubber, we've already kind of mentioned. Lighting, some of the UK Rally Series has night sections, so we've got some big LEDs on there. And these are not fog lights, they're additional lightings, and it doesn't do the cornering lights that the standard Land Rover does. Engine-wise, this is the normal uh, two-litre engine. It pops out about 300 ponies plenty of grunt it is a six speed automatic you have paddle shifters so if we go into the driver's seat on the inside we can also see that we've got rally bucket seats we've got the five point harness there's uh, wiring and controls all in here i'm not sure if i can pull it round for this this is your intercom between yourself and your navigator so my navigator is chris gummins who was the winning car last year in the season series. So he was the co-pilot in the winning car in the series last year. So I've got some uh, tough boots to fill. Might win, we'll see what happens. Steering wheel has been changed to a more racing, streamlined steering wheel. I'm not really sure what the difference is. Key thing though is that there's no electronics in it. The pre normal Defender has all of the magic stuff and you don't want any of that in a rally car. Shifter here so you can override paddle shift if i actually climb in again i'm gonna regret my life choices here because it hurts as far as the internals of the car we've got some cool stuff because it's got all of the electronics still in here which means i can play my music we have air conditioning which on a really hot day like today i think it's about 29 degrees we are cool breeze you've got the speakers fire extinguisher we can see down on the floor there there's a couple of jets that come out in here for the passengers and then also under the bonnet in the engine we've got the navigation systems up here which we're going to use to to navigate in a rally great story vanessa everything's stripped out as far as the ceiling trims and stuff we've got things like this breaker up here should we need it to try and smash out the windscreen that's there to hit it um we have a sticker in the middle here this is all my camera equipment i'm not going to have all my camera equipment when we race but here there is a sticker which is the process for engaging bowler mode now bowler mode is probably the last key thing that is worth telling you about land rover have developed a defender to do as much intelligent magical electronic traction control abs to get the car through the most technical terrain possible safely at slow speeds with maybe not the best driver like the car's very very intelligent bowler have then taken that and gone <laughs> how do we turn all that off because we need a rally car if you think about abs as a really basic example when you're hammering into a corner and you want to slam the brakes and turn ABS is not going to help you out. It's going to probably like disengage the brakes because it's skidding and the, the car's going to go, I'm not braking, I'm not braking. You know exactly what ABS is meant to do. Whereas a rally driver, you need to be able to go brake, 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 control it. And if you had ABS, you'd probably end up going in the straight line and not making it around the corner. So that's why bowler mode turns it all off and turns it into a raw, ready, rally racing machine. The RRRs. We've got a little cargo net for helmets. So when you're on the road liaison stages, you don't want to have your helmet on. Now, if you're going through a quiet little village, even if you're going 12 miles an hour, when you have a helmet on to the public, you're perceived as racing. So you just take your helmet off, pop it in the net, and it's just a bit more comfortable when you're on a road liaison to not have your helmet on. So something that I forgot on the outside, it's not a six speed, uh, it's a seven speed, my mistake. Um, but, oh my goodness, first time. I haven't quite figured out this. I haven't got the most mobility with my right hip. Check out my other video for why I have a dodgy hip. I got hit by a car and it's all a bit awkward. 
Suspension, that's the other really important thing on a rally car. Now the Defender has great suspension as it is, but it is not rally ready. So they have a massively upgraded suspension system. They've got a Fox setup. And if you want to know all the specs on suspension, have a look at the Bowler website. I is not a spec reading person. I just know that it's got good suspension to hit all the bumps really fast. So we've done the power, we've done the suspension, we've done the safety, we've done the structure and the strengthening. We've done the stuff for the regulations. That's probably a pretty good run through of what is a Bowler rally car and what are they doing taking it from the base to the big boy right here. I think the key thing to mention is that getting into rally is really expensive. If you're wanting to go out and pick up a rally car, you must be looking at sort of 100, 150 grand to get a pretty decent rally car that's going to go out there and do stuff and compete in a whole series like this. With Defender, you're looking at a tiny bit more than that, but that includes a whole year of racing and you own the car at the end of it. So what they've kind of done is gone, right, what do we need to change on the Defender to make it rally ready? What don't we need to, to try and keep the best price for it? Another thing that's worth mentioning is that a lot of different types of rally cars are specifically designed for a specific type of rally driving. You've got hill climbs, gravel tracks, hill rallies, cross country rallies, I'm gonna start learning this because each time I do a race, I'm doing a different type of rally. But the Defender is actually a car that can do all of them. It's not necessarily gonna win any of them, but it can do all of them. And I think that's a really cool way to have that versatility, which is gonna strengthen your driving. Uh, it's worth staying tuned for what Bowler are up to though, because they have some really big goals over the next couple of years. I'm gonna get myself back to the bivouac. We've got scrutiny and sign on, and then we're gonna race. Okay, I'm just gonna get back in the car. And Anyway, I'm, um, I'm out of here before I embarrass myself anymore.